When it comes to hobbies, photography is definitely one of the more expensive hobbies and definitely one of the more expensive professions that you could choose to take up. There's a pretty high barrier to entry, but fortunately, there are certain ways in which you can reduce your costs. And one of those is by buying cheaper third party lenses. Now, when it comes to third party lenses for the Fuji X mount ecosystem, the range of lenses has come on in leaps and bounds, especially over the past few years. For almost every OEM lens, you have a third party lens competitor, which is much cheaper sometimes better and possibly just a little bit more fun. Greetings YouTube, my name is Stuart and I'm on a mission to document my journey as a photographer and videographer using the Fujifilm ecosystem, sharing the gear and the settings that I use all while showing you how I spend my downtime here in South Korea. So with all this third party glass flooding the market, uh, I thought I'd put together a list of the five most exciting budget third party lenses that you could get for your Fuji X mount camera in 2024. And some of these might be familiar to you, some of them might not. So keep watching and let me know if there's anything that I've missed. Now, I've already mentioned that I'm going to pick just five, but in order to narrow down five lenses from a list of around 50 uh, third party lenses, we need to put some criteria in place to choose the lenses that are going to make the cut. First of all, I would like these uh, lenses to at the very least have autofocus. Now that's no slight to manual focus lenses, which can be very cheap and can be, can be very fun. But if you are considering making your way into professional shooting while still building up a budget kit, then you will inevitably need uh, lenses with autofocus um, in order to kind of make that jump into paid shooting. The next criterion that I'm going to include is that all these lenses should be primes. And I feel like out of the uh, list of uh, larger list of third party lenses, there are more than enough fast primes, especially at f1.4 and f1.2 to justify this. Remember, this is also a budget list. So we're going to try and keep the recommended retail price as close to $500 or below as possible. And last but not least, we're going to include a lens for every focal length category. So we'll take a look at an ultra wide, a wide angle, a mid kind of mid range focal length, a mid to telephoto focal length, and then a telephoto uh, length lens. I do wanna stress that although I have experience with some of these lenses, I don't have experience, hands-on experience with all of them. And I will be using the reviews of other photographers and YouTubers as a reference for this. So take this with a grain of salt and remember that this is nothing more than a personal recommendation. So if it is the case that you buy one of these based on this recommendation and you're not satisfied, hopefully you won't be too much poorer for it because these lenses are supposed to be on the cheaper end. But if you do end up buying one of these lenses and you end up liking it, then that would be fantastic. So keep watching to find out if there's a lens that you could use. So to start off our list, the first lens that I'm going to recommend is the Samyang 12 mm f2. Now I haven't used this lens myself. I don't have hands-on experience with it, but I have seen some relatively positive reviews about this lens on Fuji uh, bodies. And it seems to have a pretty decent rep in the Fuji community. And I think a lot of people use this lens for astrophotography, especially because it is on the wider end. But this is probably a lens that you know, yeah, you could use for a variety of things. I would like to get my hands on uh, a copy of this to maybe try it out myself, but I imagine that this is a lens that you would use for specific niche use cases like astrophotography, probably real estate as well, and architectural shooting. So along the way in this video, I am going to include some honorable mentions. So these are perhaps lenses that might not have made the first choice cut, but they are definitely worth looking into. And in this uh, ultra wide category, I think one of the main choices that, you know, you should definitely consider looking into if you are looking for an ultra wide is the Viltrox 13 millimeter f1.4. For sure, this is another lens that you could look into. And as of recording, this video goes for around 478 dollars. Next up is a lens that I have gotten used to using over the past probably 
five or four months or so, I think maybe even longer, six months. I can't remember when exactly I got it, but that is the Voltrox 23mm f1.4. So this lens will run you around $325 US, which I think is a pretty good price. It's got autofocus. It does have an aperture ring. It's 1.4. It's a gorgeous 35mm equivalent, and I've really enjoyed using it for my client shoots. Overall, the rendering is pretty good. You get a really pleasing bokeh on this lens. Although I will say one of the downsides is that you do tend to get a bit of fringing if you shoot wide open, especially in bright daylight and sunny blue skies. Nonetheless, it's a lens which I am happy to include on this list and I think it is the perfect budget, budget starter 35mm equivalent if you're looking for an interchangeable lens that you can switch out on your Fuji X-Mount camera. So next up is the kind of mid to telephoto uh, focal length. And for this category, I'm going to recommend the Sigma 56mm f1.4. Now, I don't have any experience with this specific lens on the Fuji X-Mount system, but I have lots of experience with this lens on the Sony E-Mount system. And you can look at a lot of the videos that I've shot this lens has always been tack sharp for me, like bleedingly sharp. It was my go-to portrait lens when I you know, used to shoot on Sony. A very pleasing bokeh, never, hardly ever missed focus. And I think that you know, was partly to do with the Sony autofocus being so good and then just the lens also being a really good performer, uh, even wide open at f1.4. The reason I'm including it here is because it's really nice, it's compact, it's not burdensome and at the time of shooting this video you can get it for around about 430 US dollars on B&H photo. So in terms of telephoto uh, focal length lenses I must say there is one lens that has really captured my heart since I've started using it and which I got for really cheap and that is the Viltrox 85mm f1.8. Now don't get me wrong I do love this lens I have zero regrets about it especially considering the fact that I got it for so cheap but being such a huge piece of glass, it just doesn't feel as quick or res as responsive as the Sigma 56mm, for example. And I feel like it does struggle in situations where autofocus, especially quick autofocus, is paramount. So, so, you know, situations like street photography, I would never ever use this for sports shooting uh, just because I don't feel like the autofocus speed is up to par with other lenses. When you do nail focus though, the rendering on this lens is simply su superb. The background just melts away. There's a gorgeous compression. Uh, for portraits, this has become a go-to lens, uh, you know, any kind of page shoot that I do. As I've mentioned, it is quite a chunky piece of glass. I actually have a full review on this lens, which I will probably update at some point. So because it is because it is such a big piece of glass, you do tend to get a lot of looks when you're doing street photography from people around you. But again, when you get the results, when you nail the results with this lens, it is a very rewarding lens to use. There is another lens in this category, the sibling actually uh, to this 85mm f1.8 that I would like to mention, and that is the 75mm f1.2. Now for me, the 75mm f1.2 was always a non-starter. I didn't feel like I needed it, but this has been a lens that a lot of the Fuji community have really kind of grown to love. People have given this rave reviews and it is definitely one of the standout performers if we are talking about budget lenses. But the reason I haven't included it on this list is because it does go past that $500 RRP. And that lens is about $150 more at $550 new on b &H Photos. So I feel like if you've got that little bit of extra budget to spend on the lens, then for sure go for the 75mm f1.2, but you won't be disappointed if you get the 85mm f1.8 and you're using it for specific applications. Now there is one focal length that I have left off this list and that's kind of the mid to telephoto focal length, you know, that kind of 30 to 35mm uh, category. And for this, I actually wanted to focus on the lens sets that a lot of the uh, manufacturers make. So Sigma, for example, they make a 16, a 30, and the 56, and I think they also make a 23mm f1.4. Then you've got Voltrox, they make their set of uh, 13, 23, 
33 and then the 56 and those kind of comprise a set and then you've got Surui who also recently released their sniper set which I believe is 23 33 and 56 f 1.2 lenses so you know there's not really a lot I feel between those um, manufacturers and you could really kind of pick out whichever one that you feel suits you best while we are talking about that uh, mid to telephoto focal length 30 to kind of 35 mil the one lens that I would like to mention is the TT Artisan 35mm f1.8 lens. Now, uh, in the past, TT Artisan, I think they're a Chinese manufacturer. They've done a lot of manual focus lenses, one of which I have and which is a lot of fun to shoot. But this is kind of their first one of their first forays into making autofocus lenses, uh, especially at this focal length. And I feel like a 35mm at f1.8 is a very classic 50mm uh, equivalent. And this is also bargain basement price at around 150 US dollars I believe definitely a lens which I would like to try but also a lens that I've seen uh, in terms of feedback from reviewers performs relatively well uh, relative to its price point in conclusion there's so much cheap yet still decent glass for the Fujifilm X-mount ecosystem that it does at least make getting into uh, photography especially if you are a hobbyist with uh, not that big of a budget it just does make it a bit easier to get into the field without spending too much cash and I hope this video has helped those of you who are perhaps looking for some budget options in terms of lenses without having to pay the premium that comes with buying a native Fuji OEM glass if you did enjoy this video then I would absolutely appreciate a like and a subscribe Thank you very much for watching this episode of The Weekend Salaryman. I'll see you in the next one.